Hey everyone, hope you're doing well today. And welcome back to Alfred's Basic Adult Piano Course Lesson Book Level 1. This video is Lesson 53, which is covering page 60 in our book, The Flat Sign and the Song Rock It Away. All right, so let's take a moment and talk about the flat sign and more specifically how flats work on the piano. So the example they give at the top of page 60 in the little diagram is, is a B. Uh, so let's go to this B right here, right below middle C. And the way a flat works is you're gonna go to the very next key to the left, which is down the piano. So the very next key, whether it's white or black, and in this case, it's a black key, and so this would be B flat. Okay, so this rule works with, with any key. Uh, you can pick E. I'm gonna pick this E right above middle C. And if I wanna flat it, again, I go to the very next key to the left, which is either white or black. In this case, it's black, so this is E flat. Now, all the black keys on the piano are flats. They're also sharps, so it depends on if the piece of music you're playing is calling for sharps or flats. So obviously today in this lesson, we're just gonna be thinking flats. But some white keys are flats too. There's only two of them. And that is F. And if I flat F, the very next key to the left is not black in this case, it's actually white. So technically the E key here also works as F flat. Most of the time you're just gonna see it as an E, but Sometimes, for reasons that are a little too complicated at this point, um, you might see it as F flat. The other one is C, so middle C is right here. If I go C flat, it's actually gonna be the B key, but in some cases, it will be called C flat. You don't have to worry about those today. All you have to worry about really is just one flat that you're gonna learn today specifically that's actually going to be in the right hand, and that's going to be B flat, right here. So as you're first learning flats, you know, you could do like a two-step approach. If you see a B flat in the music, first just go to B and then say, okay, I need to go to the next key to the left, which is right here. So there's B flat. So that's what I call like the two-step approach. But eventually, if you want to be really good at this, memorize that this is always B flat. And it's true. This key is always B flat, just like this one here and this one here. The third key on the set of three black keys, if you count one, two, three, the third key is always, always, always B flat. Now, if you're in sharps, yes, it's an A sharp. But if you're in flats, this is always B flat. So you can just memorize. Third key on the set of three black keys is always B flat. So again, at the top of page 60, it says the flat sign before a note so in the sheet music, you're actually going to see a flat sign right before the note. And that just gives you a little more extra time warning saying, hey, you're going to flat this note. It means play the next key to the left, whether black or white, which we just talked about. And you see the diagram there, a B and a B flat. And then it says a flat appears before a note. It applies to that note for the rest of the measure. Same rule that we had with sharps when we learned sharps. So if you look there on the, on the right of the top, portion of the page, we've got this little example in the treble clef. And our very first note is G, and I'm just going to be in my G position here with my thumb on G. My second note is A, and my third note is B flat. Now, you either memorize that this is B flat, or you can do the two-step approach. Say, well, here's B, and now let me flat it. Okay, and the very next note is A. So that's our first measure, but look at measure two. You've got a B flat on beat one. You've got an A. Now on beat three, you just see a B, but it's not B because of the rule, it's still B flat. So no matter how many Bs I see in that measure, if the first one or whatever Bs follow up on a, a B flat, they're all gonna be flat, okay? I mean, it's pretty logical that if the very first note of the measure is just marked to B, you're going to play it as a B. But let's say your second note is marked as a B flat, that's going to be a B flat. If your third note is marked as a B, that's still going to be B flat. So you see how that works? So once one of those notes is marked as a flat, 
those same notes remain flat until you get to a next measure. Now you look at the third measure there, that whole note is a B flat. They had to put the flat sign there if they wanted it flat because it's a new measure. So that's how that rule works. So that's basically it for flat. So let's, let's uh, look at the song Rock It Away. Uh, we're in 4-4 four, four time here, four beats per measure. There are no eighth notes, so you're just going to count one, two, three, four. And of course, the focus on this lesson and this song today is playing with flats, specifically in our right hand. So let's look at the notes in our right hand first. It's going to be the G position. Your very first note there, very first two notes actually, are Gs. So you're going to have your thumb on G. So beats one and two are both Gs. And then you're going to go up to a B on beat three and then a D on beat four. Now notice those three notes, that's a G chord and they're made of thirds or skips. There's a lot of ways you can look at this. So just know, uh, fingering too, one, three, five. So just know that you have several tools to approach measure one from your musical toolbox and measure two is a G on beats one and two, the half note. And you got B on three and D on four. So once again, outlining a G chord in the first two measures. Measure three, you're gonna have your second finger on A, thumb on G, on beat two, back to the A, back to the G, and here's our first B flat on the last measure. Notice it's gonna be the third finger, B flat, and then two one A. And that's a dotted half note for three counts. Going down to the second line, the first two measures are exactly the same. G, G, B, D. Next measure, G for two beats, B and D. Third measure, B flat again, still with the third finger. And in this song, it's always gonna be the third finger. On beat one, G on beat two. And be careful on beat three, that is still B flat. Remember our rule. If it's already a B flat in the measure, all Bs are now gonna remain flat. So even though it's not marked a flat. Now, as you're learning this, it's okay to grab a pencil and draw a flat sign if you want. Nothing wrong with that if you keep forgetting. But try to memorize the rules so that you can just become that much better, that much faster. And our last measure is two on A for four beats. Now the third line is the exact same thing as the first line. In fact, I'm seeing this in both hands. Exact same thing. You've learned line one, you've learned line two. And uh, it looks like the first two measures of the fourth line are the same as the first two measures of every line above it. On measure three down there, you've got third finger on B flat, go down to a G, two on A, and then our last measure is thumb on G. So it's really not that difficult. The only thing new here is just getting used to playing some flats, but it's very repetitive. It's always a B flat. Um, it's always the third finger. And just remember, again, on the second line, third measure, that half note is still a B flat. And your left hand is gonna be really easy. You've only got three chords you're playing. It's also the G position right here with your left hand. Now the first two measures of every line are exactly the same. So that was true of the right hand, it's true of the left hand. You're gonna play a G chord. And it can't get any much, it can't get any easier than this because it's also tied in those two measures. So you're literally holding that for eight counts. So when you put the hands together, just focus on counting in the right hand and just don't let up on the left hand. So that's what it's like when you got both hands together. Now going back to just the left hand, third measure on the top line, this is your C chord. And uh, remember, it's an inversion. You're not playing with the C at the bottom, but going from the G chord, just as a review here, very simple. Your second finger is already hovering above middle C. Move your thumb slightly up to the E. And that is also tied for two measures. Now, when we go down to the second line, it's back to the G chord for two measures. The third measure, there's your C chord. And the third chord we're gonna play in this piece on the last measure of that second line is our D7. 
So remember the F sharp right there. In this piece, you're thinking flats, but we also have a sharp, F sharp, C, and D. And where you play that C chord, the measure before, will help determine how easily you can get to the D7. If you're down here on the edge of the keys, just remember, you got to go that much further with your fifth finger to that sharp. It's doable, but it's just a lot of movement. Now, if you're here, look at where my fifth finger is. So when I go to my D7, watch this, it barely moves over, okay? Strong fingers is the key though, curved fingers. When you get to the third line, G chord, again on the first two measures, C chord, the next two measures. So the third line, again, in both hands is the exact same thing as the first line. The fourth line, you got that G chord. In the third measure, this is the only time the left hand plays something less than a whole note in value. You've got two beats on the C chord, two beats on the D7, and then your last measure is a G. So it would be actually very helpful to go through that several times as an exercise. The C chord, the D7, and the G. Let's just see how fast you can get that. You're going to want to get it pretty fast because remember, you still got to put the right hand with it, and the right hand's got this B flat. So you got a couple things you're thinking about here. So those last two measures might be two of the trickiest measures when you put the hands together, which we're about to do right now. So at the beginning, remember G position in both hands. Remember you got the tie in the left hand. So here's your first tricky spot, this transition into measure three, because both hands, something's changing. Two on A in the right hand, and then that C chord in the left hand. So if you're having a hard time getting there in time, you might want to practice going from this. Now this right here is where I'm at on beat four in the measure before. So you're going from here, you're going to here. So you might just want to go back and forth so you can get that fast enough. Okay, and then moving on, remember the left hand's tied the rest of the line. And don't rush that dotted half note. We'll get to um, counting in just a moment. The second line starts out the exact same way as the first line. Here's your next difficult transition, measure three. And you got the B flat in the right hand. So that's gonna be a little more challenging. And you go into that C chord in the left hand. So again, practice coming from here on beat four here on beat one. And as I'm practicing that, I am anticipating the B flat there. I'm anticipating this black key. So what actually might be even more helpful is going back to measure two right there on beat three. So why is that? Because on beat three, you're playing a B natural in the right hand. Beat four, you're going to G, I mean D. And then beat one, you go to B flat. So your third finger is going from a white key and then to the black key. So this practice right here will be pretty helpful. Okay, moving on. And remember, keep that B flat on that half note. And then the last measure, both hands change. And this is a big one too. Easy in the right hand, you just go second finger A, but you got that D7 in the left hand. Third line is the exact same thing as the first line. Bottom line, the first two measures are repeat. Now here's the tricky section going to measure three. I got my third finger on B flat and I've got that C chord. This is actually the same transition you did between measures two and three on the second line. So you could still practice going, whoops, on the second measure, third beat. So B natural to D and then B flat plus changing to that C chord. But if you practiced it a lot on the second line, you should be good at this point. Now moving on in that third measure, Remember, you got this transition on beat three. Okay, so you might want to practice going from here on beat two to here on beat three. 
recognize your right hand is just going up one note and one finger, G to A. The harder transition is your left hand. And remember, wherever you put this C chord determines how easily and how quickly you get to the D7. So you don't want to really be down here because then you got to fly up there. It's doable, but it may not be that smooth either. And then of course you've got the transition to the last measure, which the right hand's just going from A to G. It's your left hand that's making a bigger change to the G chord. That's pretty much it. So now what I'm gonna do is just play the whole piece through for you. I'll give a count off so you can hear the steady tempo. It's moderately fast, so it's gonna move along at a pretty good pace. Um, it's meant to a forte the entire time, so just average volume. Naturally, you want your right hand to be louder if possible because it's melody. Look at the right hand throughout the entire piece. It's nothing but slurs, legato markings. So you want to try to play it as smoothly as possible. But uh, other than that, that's, that's just about it. So here we go from the very beginning with both hands. One, two, ready, go. That's about it. That covers it. So like I said, get used to the B flats in the right hand. And as you put the hands together, work out those transitions between, basically it's between the spots where um, your chords are changing in the left hand. That's probably, probably going to be the most challenging spots when you're putting the hands together. But other than that, it's not a terribly difficult piece. So just being introduced to flats and what they are. And uh, I wish you all the best on this piece, and I will see you in the next lesson.